Hey guys, um, welcome to my level, and I'm gonna show you guys how to use matinee, I mean, um, timeline, to basically create a basic elevator. I'm gonna make a block going up and down just to kind of give my players a way of hopping on top of it to get up here. Um, I'll probably move it somewhere else eventually. I've actually been thinking about making an elevator. So we're going to use timeline to uh, make that happen. So what you're going to want to do first is open your level blueprints here. Um, we are not going to be using these for this. You can use an actor begin overlap with a uh, trigger to be able to start whatever it is you want them to do. But we're not going to do that for this. We're going to use we're going to have it start right at the beginning. Um, you're going to want to grab a, well first let's make a, make my elevator physically. We're going to use uh, a cube. Bring it in here and let's just kind of like size it up just to make it look uh, like a nice platform I guess. A decent sized platform. Um, That should be good enough. Then let's bring it over to the wall. Bring it down here, right about there, and that should be good. All right, and let's call this elevator. And then going back into the level blueprints, I should be able to find elevator if I type it in, get my actor. So I'm going to try something. Instead of using the level blueprint, I'm going to use a blueprint specifically for the elevator. I don't know if it makes a difference, but we're going to find out. Um, I wasn't able to, for some reason, bring the um, object itself into the blueprint. It wasn't giving me the option to create an instance for it. Um, I don't know if I had to do something else, but we're going to try this to see if it works. So here's the timeline. You just right click in here, bring up timeline, and then add timeline. And you can have as many as you want, but here's our timeline, and it gives you a bunch of different options to play. Play from start, stop, reverse, reverse from end, set new time, and here is the other time. Um, when you make your... Hold up a sec. No. No. Okay. And then if you wanted to add on a different object or just finish, it gives you a bunch of options. Um, from here, we're going to need to get get world location. You're going to want to come off here and set world location. There you go. That's better. All right. Um, jumping too far ahead of myself here. All right, so depending on how you want to move this object, <clears throat> um, you have to look at which axis is it going to move on and which axis are not. It's not going to move on. Um, I want mine to move across the Z axis, I believe, right? It's not the X axis. The Z axis, not X or Y. Um, just so I know I'm not losing my mind. X, yeah. Well, yes, okay, so it is going to go move again along the Z axis. So we're going to want to bring another one off of here and then get world location. And you right click into here and then split struct pin. And then I believe, if I am correct, you split these struct pins as well. And then whatever axis you don't want them to move on from what I could gather, you uh, connect these pins. So X and then Y. So 
since we're doing the z-axis. All right, so with this all set up, we're going to bring this off of update into here, and then we're going to bring this to play from start. So now I have to go in and make some, you know, configurations. So what does it start at, let's just say 186 on the dot. Okay, so that's 186 on the dot. And then I want this to go to at least, we can make it, how far is 1200? That should be enough for the player to get up. So 186 and 1200 is the top. Okay, so we would go into time, double click on timeline, and then you could either add a float track, you could get a bunch of different options for tracks. Add a vector track, vent track, or color track. So we're gonna add a float track for this, and um, I don't know, elevator. There you go. There you go. And we are going. They say that it's defaulted at five seconds. Um, that's probably gonna move pretty fast. Uh, let's just do um, ten seconds. I feel like ten. If it'll let me do ten seconds. There you go. So 10 seconds should be relatively good. There we go. And we are going to want to add the first. So add the keyframe um, at. Zero. The value is going to be the 186. <laughs> okay, um, this is pretty crazy. Uh, so it's going to be 186. Then at the halfway mark, which would be five. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Then at the halfway mark, five, it's going to be 1,200. Can I just drag this off? No. I think I do see the line coming off of it. Okay. Sorry, I was just kind of like losing my mind here. Uh, so that's at two, 1,200. And then add a final key, and this will be at the 10 second at the 10 second mark and this is going to be the one, next 186 so there we go so i do see the lines coming off of it. i just didn't see them at first i was like are they connected so it does look like they are indeed connected um and then just for fun just to kind of see we're gonna hit play we're gonna make sure this is gonna set right um, let's see here. There should be some set. No, no, no. We haven't done any. We haven't done finished it up yet. Um, so that should be saved. You can use these buttons to uh, make it so that way you can see it better. Um, that way it wasn't like super long. I it was just kind of surprising me that it was that big. Um, and then you've got your nice little graph here. You've got the start position end position at halfway mark and then back to the start position and then um, trying to remember if you do this to auto if you make all of these to auto because right now if we were to go into it it would be a very rigid movement it would just hit it like it's bouncing off of something or hitting a wall and then come back and then as it's down below and re, re uh, looping, which is what you can make sure you're setting it to loop. Um, it'll look like it's hitting a wall, like boom, 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 boom. So, and you don't want that. You want it to make it look, unless you that's what you're going for, then sure. But if you want to make it look smooth, you gotta set it to auto. So that way it's a nice smooth movement all the way through. It's going up and then when it hits its top, it's kind of like slowly coming back down. You'll, you'll see in a moment. So once this is done, you can go back into your event graph, and then you can 
Sorry, I was losing my mind again. Um, I'll, your track, whatever track you just created, will show up here at the bottom. And then you will select whatever it's going into, which will be my Z. So now, since that's connected, I should be able to see that in here. Um, make sure I compile and save. And make sure... Maybe I don't need to make sure of anything. Let's just hop in, see what it's doing. And it's not doing anything. All right. That's what it was. Mo you got to make it movable. <laughs> All right, make sure it's movable. Um, is this really your... S that can't be right, because... I tested it and had it at 186. Um, let's set it to 190 just for now. Both of these. I don't know why it's like in the ground. Compile, save. Movable. Alright, now it should be moving. There we go. See how it at this top, instead of just hitting something invisible, it just kind of like slowly moves like that. And now my player has a nice little elevator. And then I could hop on top. <laughs> uh, hold on, guys. Hold on. Hold on. Um, wait just one second. Uh, hold on. Why? Why? Why would I? Why would I be walking through it? Why would I go right through it? That doesn't make sense. All right, guys. Um, it's because of. I don't know why I did this at the first, but with collision, all right, that's what you, you gotta like, just, you know, put it back to default, you know, and then, and then you play, and then you, uh, wait for it to come back now, and then I should be able to hop on top of it, and then I finally get up top. And here I am. I've been wanting... To, oh, Jesus. I've been wanting to try this. Okay, so I can't go through here. Cool. I can get probably get up on top, but I don't want to do that. But now I've got a nice little elevator, which I'll probably use for my... Up oh, my God. Well, good thing we don't have fall damage yet. But here it is. And then, like I said, you could have it uh, actor begin overlap and do like a trigger, so it could just sit there. And then once you step into a trigger, then it starts moving. You could also set um, set world rotation, uh, which I thought was pretty cool, but there would be no need for the platform. Um, in the video I saw, the guy had the thing moving back and forth, and when he set um, rotation, set world rotation. It was kind of just, it was sickening. He was kind of riding it, and it was just weird. Um, so I believe if we do off, branch off of this, set world rotation, and there's also transform. So I'm guessing as the cube moves, it could either grow big or grow small, uh, grow long or grow uh, short, something like that. And basically, it was just weird. He had the cube... He had the cube just moving back and forth, and then he set the world rotation and did the same thing with the timeline graph, um, a beginning and end rotation, and as it's moving, it's rotating, and he got on top of it, and it's just like, as he's on it, it's just rotating, and I'm like, oh, that's gotta be sickening. Uh, so there's no reason for us to do it with this elevator, uh, it would just be, it would probably be a challenge, maybe, uh, if you wanted to give the players a challenge, like have it like rotate every second, like just flipping as it's going up so the players like jump having having to jump to stay on top of it but uh, i'm not going to do that but here is my elevator and like i said i'll probably set up the puzzle for it 
um, where something's going to need to be in a specific location for it to work. And I want it to be, like, inside once we get through the first door. So, um, yeah, there it is. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. There we go. Ah, no, 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 no. Darn. I feel like I can't control this in in flight. I don't know why. I think I gotta change something. But that's a tutorial for how to use the timeline. Like I said, you could add a vector track, event track, or color track if you wanted to. Um, just right click and bring up timeline. Um, I don't know why I couldn't do it with the uh, level blueprints. I needed to get the mesh in here somehow, so I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna use. So it doesn't. It, it looks like it doesn't matter. If you want to create a blueprint, just whatever object you bring in, just create a blueprint for that object. It does. It looks like it doesn't really matter. I thought I'd have to use a level blueprint, but since I couldn't bring in the mesh for some reason, I'm like, okay, let's just make it a blueprint for the mesh itself, and then just drag it in. But there it is. For a, at least that's what you know, just to move the knot for to ah uh, to move the object. <laughs> All right, um, that's my tutorial.